All right, going to do a video here showing the proof that church steeples are in fact being used as antennas. You can just do a Google search. You can see right here church steeples used as antennas. Huffington Post, electrosmogprevention.org, CGACT. That's yeah, Connecticut there. Uh, their government website, their state website, NewYorkTimes.com, InsuranceBoard.org, uh, Assets, uh, USA Today. Bangor Daily News, Southern Maine, um, down through Jehovah's Witnesses .com. Uh, but what we're going to focus on is this article right here. Uh, actually, it's this one over here, but let me just go here first. This is the images thing, and of course you can see right here, this is what your cell phone towers normally look like, but see, isn't it much better to hide them inside the nice steeple there? Then it's not as... Uh, offensive looking I guess and all these different places here but I thought this one down here was a pretty interesting diagram uh, or was that at yeah right here okay LTE antenna AT&T antennas uh, rad center right there you go um, yeah you can see all the different stuff here all the details of how this thing works where they put them in and things so that you can't see it. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, so, now let's read this article here from the New York Times. Notice this is July 29th of 2001. This is a quite a bit, you know, very, very old article here. It says here, the Connecticut skyline has always been defined by its church steeples. These, those towers that rise above, above the trees probably should be above there, but the trees and give so many of the state's community, communities their charm. But in a 21st century twist, these old spires that were originally built to resemble Christopher Wren's stone steeples in London are becoming the camouflage to hide microwave antennas for cell phone companies. Microwave technology is extremely dangerous, can be used to mess your mind up, can be used for mind controls, very, very bad stuff. Uh, look at uh, Barry, Trow Barry Trower's uh, information on YouTube. A very intelligent man from the UK. But anyhow, what started slowly just a few years ago is becoming much more common with church after church and town after town turning over the rooftops to the telephone companies. In return, cash-strapped churches not only receive monthly rent from the companies, but also get their steeples, often in desperate need of repairs, renovated for free. It is a gift many churches just can't pass up. We are a very poor church, trying our best to help the people in the community, said the Reverend Allison B. Cook, woman preacher of St. James Episcopal Church in Derby, where Verizon Wireless installed an antenna in 1997. How many people had cell phones back in 1997? Not very many. This was for us a gift, and it was going to go somewhere. Despite concerns about the health effects of microwave radiation and the queasiness over letting commercial ventures use their space, about 20 churches have cut deals with the phone companies and more are in negotiation. Remember, this is 2001, so it's now into the hundreds, probably thousands. In Goshen, for example, Sprint PCS spent two weeks in June erecting a 68-foot high antenna inside the clock tower of Goshen Church of Christ Congregational, the first church of Christ whose steeple had dominated the village of Unionville for three quarters of a century until the spire was raised about 50 years ago. Finally got a new one last year, courtesy of Verizon Wireless. We're going to see more about this later. Singular Wireless installed nine antennas at the Stamford Baptist Church. Huh that were placed on the columns that support the church bell. Steeple antennas have also been placed in Ansonia, Bethel, Cromwell, Darien, Derby, Manchester, New Haven, Mil New Milford, Newtown, Newtown, Southport, and Weathers, Weathersfield, with more planned in Hartford, Ridgefield, Southington, and Watertown. Some communities such as Derby, New Haven, and Southport have antennas in more than one church. Hmm. Indeed, these kind of deals have turned into such a boon for churches that they have raised tax questions. The town of Bloomfield, New Jersey is suing one of its churches in an attempt to collect taxes on the cell cellular antennas it is housing for voice stream wireless. This is 2001. Remember that. 
Bloomfield is acting under a state law that allows governments to tax churches and other religious institutions for the portions of their facilities leads to profit-making ventures. Why? Because the federal government owns the churches. You see? The Connecticut Office of Policy and Management said there is no such tax law in Connecticut, although the state is looking into it. State Senator Martin M. Looney, <laughs> like that, a Democrat of New Haven and chairman of the Finance, Revenue, and Bonding Committee of the state legislature, said committee members have discussed the issue and are considering the extent to which cell phone antennas should be taxed, even those in churches. You know, it's amazing. Cell phone companies said they were approaching churches because they want unobtrusive places to put their antennas. Hmm. Around the Northeast, they have been courting churches since the mid-1990s. Look at that. Phone companies courting churches since the mid-1990s. I mean, it's insane. I think back to when I graduated high school in 1994, and I think back to then, cell phones were almost unheard of. It's incredible. Churches are the best looking of the tall structures they have used, which in Massachusetts include water towers and, an, and another symbol of the region's past, smokestacks from defunct factories. The companies want to extend radio signals and the service that so many people now count on without building the metal cell phone towers many of those same people hate. Uh, we always replicate the original design and we at times go to considerable additional expense in order to do historical preservation, Adrian Paul, a spokesman for Sprint PCS, said about the churches. We may not always be, used, be, be able to use original materials, but we do keep the design aesthetic. God, can't mess up those uh, phallic steeples on those pagan buildings. That's what VoiceStream Wireless did in Ansonia. The antennas mounted on the outside of church... Christ Church's bell tower are hard to see because a fiberglass covering matches the stone of the structure exactly. I went back a year later and I didn't even know they were there, said Brandon Sharkey. I'm going to show you proof of this here in just a couple minutes. Owner of Connecticut Zoning and Permitting, a Hamden company that obtained zoning permits for voice stream. One of the, most, one of the more comprehensive renovations transformed the first Church of Christ in the village of Unionville, which is part of Farmington. Since 1885, the church had been topped by a stone spire that loomed above the valley center, but it was torn down in the 1950s when it began to decay. The church had always wanted to build another, but it could not afford to. In October 2000, Verizon Wire Wireless erected a new steeple, but of steel and fiberglass, not stone, although it was shaped like the church's original spire. The new steeple was made of different materials because radio waves can't penetrate stone. Verizon, now look at this, said the new steeple cost more than $500,000 to build, but could not be more specific. Why is it so important for these guys to get the antennas up? $500,000 to build a new steeple on this pagan cult building? And before we go on, let me just show you here. Here it is right there. You can see this is their website. First Church 1652, First Church of Christ, Congregational. Uh-oh, look over here. Hmm. Yeah, you can see where they're going to be going in eternity, going to hell, supporting sodomy. Disgusting. Well, who's the pastor of this fine assembly? Oh, a female preacher. Hmm. Never would have thought it. Reverend Susan Murtha. Yeah. Okay. You know, and it's all just socialism and everything else is all the, the thing is about. Uh, let's see if I can get a picture Meeting House History. They might show a picture of it here. You can kind of see it right there. You can see how big this, this thing is. $500,000 is what they spent on it. Uh, Verizon. Spending $500,000 to put that thing in there. Why is that so important to them? Well, I'm going to tell you my theory in a little bit. But, uh, oops. Just went and clicked off the thing. Let's go down here. Okay, back to the article. The Reverend Thomas Dean, pastor at the church, but this is written back in 2001, so it's now a woman that pastors it, said his predecessor, predecessor sought out Verizon Wireless in 1996 specifically to rebuild the spire. So they contacted Verizon. Hmm. The deal moved slowly over several years, fired up, the community and led to a lawsuit by Verizon against the Zoning Commission. By the end, most of the church members wanted the tower, Mr. Dean said. We thought it would be a nice 
It would be nice to have a steeple again, he said. Steeples have long been an important part of the New England landscape and are deeply symbolic. Very true. Extremely true. Michael J. Crosby, editor of Faith and Form magazine, uh, excuse me, a journal published in Norwalk for the Interfaith Forum on Religion, Art, and Architecture, said the steeples are historic relics of the 18th and 19th centuries when architects wanted to suggest a connection between earth and heaven. But see, here's how the occult works. They'll tell you this. This is for the uninitiated, but to the people that actually know what this means, this is this connection is between Mother Earth and Father Sky. That's why it is a phallic symbol. It's a it's a sexual symbol connecting the woman Earth with the man Heaven. Mother Earth, Father Sky. That's what this whole thing is about. It's pagan, completely pagan. It says here, if you go through a great old city there has that hasn't been junked up with a lot of skyscrapers yet, I'm thinking of a city like Waterbury. You get a sense of what the role of the church steeple was on the skyline in 18th and 19th century cities, Mr. Cosby said. And none of those steeples had hold a self antenna as yet. But the Church of the Sacred Heart on Wolcott, Wolcott Street has received a permit to allow AT&T Wireless to install some. Mr. Cosby said many churches cannot afford to restore their old steeples, so, steeples, so turning to the phone companies for the money may be the best move. Yeah, sure. A lot of churches are strapped. They all are. All of them want your money, he said. They've got those incredibly high-maintenance buildings. Check that out. High-maintenance buildings, yeah. Buildings that do take a lot of time and money to keep up, and there's just no base to keep that going. How many times have I said that? Babel buildings are an incredible waste of money. Of course, putting a microwave antenna inside a church steeple means that parishioners must sit underneath it on Sunday mornings. That raises health concerns. Scientists are not in unity on that question, though more and more of them have decided over the last two decades that the lower frequencies of the electromagnetic spectrum, including microwaves and radio waves, do no harm or do not harm people. Yeah, you know the reason they decide that there, these scientists? Right there, the reason they say, oh, we've decided it doesn't harm people. Where do you think they're getting their money from? They get kickbacks from the very people. They don't bite the hand that feeds them, in other words. All known forms of cancer, including viruses, chemicals, radiation, they all induce cancer by causing damage to the DNA, said Robert Park, professor of physics at the University of Maryland and director of the Washington Office of the American Physical Society. It's got to be able to break that chemical bond. The simple fact is that radio waves can't do that. They just don't have enough energy. They don't have nearly enough. He's a total liar. However, Dr. George L. Carlo, author of Cell Phones and Invisible Hazards in the Wireless Age, there's your publisher there, has said he is concerned about the dangers of cell phones. He said some studies indicated that microwaves could cause genetic damage and could weaken the blood-brain barrier that protects the brain. Absolutely true. It, it's even far worse than that. Uh, the cell phones are absolutely terrible for your health. That's why if you look in the um, some of the warning and stuff in there in, in your cell phone, it'll tell you that you should hold it at least, I think it's like 10 inches away from your body. Well, nobody does that when they're talking on those things. They put it right up against their face. It's terrible. But uh, it says here, the Goshen Church of Christ Congregational, where a daycare center runs out of the parish hall, was so concerned about the issue that it hired Peter A. Valberg, a Harvard physicist, to give a talk to the church. He said it was his opinion that there was no risk to the congregation, yeah, because he's bought and paid for, according to Jeffrey Lindstrom, a house designer who represented the church for the project. Mr. Valberg could not be reached for comment. We convinced pretty much everybody, Mr. Lindstrom said, but one family pulled their child out. Yeah, they had sense. Shouldn't have been going in the first place. Another reason people worry about churches letting cell towers inside their steeples has to do with the ethics of allowing a commercial enterprise into a church building, however silent it is. Some members of churches with antennas said they asked themselves if it was ethical to run a rental business. Many of them said that they decided not to use the rent money to replace uh, a normal sources of revenue, the great majority of which comes from church members themselves. The Goshen Church decided to use the money to pay for major work on the building, not on the operating budget, Mr. Lindstrom said. This was presented to the congregation as a windfall and not something that's supposed to be used for running the budget, he said. Look at how much they make down here. 
Mr. Lindstrom said the church's trustees negotiated a five-year contract and had the expectation the deal would continue to at least 10 years, but that they wanted to use the money only for improvements, repairs, and when that was taken care of, mission in the community. Mm -hmm. The rent, which began in June, will be $1,500 a month, he said. This is 2001. 1500 a month is what these Babel buildings are being paid to have these towers, these antennas and things installed inside their steeples. Incredible. At the church in Unionville that got the new steeple, most people thought it was really good, said Mr. Dean, the pastor. There, was a few, there were a few people who had questions about being connected with the business. We just addressed it, that they're just renting space. We're not sponsoring Verizon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not all churches have said yes to the phone companies. At the Farmington First Church of Christ on Main Street, whose members considered and rejected a cell phone antenna, people had several fears, including giving the company access to the equipment and placing it so near their congregation. They also worried that antennas, no matter how well hidden, might change the look of their 1771 building, something they would have to explain to the local historical commission. What's that? Where's all this stuff at? The New Testament people. Oh, our building's historical, and we, we the zoning commission. We'd have to get you know the historical commission, and and you know we had to, we don't want it to change the look of. The, this is not New Testament. This is paganism. Ultimately, said Ned W. Edwards Jr., the pastor, it was hard to predict how long cell te technology would last. If people found another way of communicating in a few years, the antennas would have to be taken down at more expense and disruption. Oh, I assure you they have other plans for the antennas. We've been in the church business for almost 30, 350 years now, he said. We've been in the uh, church what? Business. That's what it is, these people, folks. And his parishioners weren't sure cell antennas would be important for nearly as long Photos. Sprint PCS erected a 68-foot high antenna inside the clock tower of Goshen. Church of Christ Congregational, top right, Steve Florio, a Sprint construction manager, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read all the rest of this. You can just read that yourself. But isn't that something? Now, remember, they said in this article, okay, in July 29th, 2001, that's when this thing was written, that they were making $1,500 a month from one antenna. Okay, remember that? Check this out. Here we have Bridgewater, Maine. This is antennasearch.com. You can go to antennasearch.com. I'll put the link down in the description box. And you can go there and you can actually look up your town and see if any of the Babel buildings are doing this thing. Right here, First Baptist Church of Bridgewater. This is right down the road from the ministry headquarters here. Right down the road. And looky there, up two, not one, but two antennas right there. First Baptist Church of Bridgewater. I'm going to actually put a little bit of video in here and uh, showing you that there are no outward signs of this, of these antennas. All right, we are heading south on Route 1 and uh, right here coming up on the right is the Babel building. Notice the uh, floor de lis. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, I don't see any antennas so interesting the antennas are totally completely concealed hmm how about that here's the back side of it don't see any antennas okay so there you see it I showed you I just I mean I literally just while doing this I mean today I drove down the street showed the back or the front there that showed the back uh, it's just incredible and the floor de lis that uh, they have on their stained glass window is a sign that's a symbol that's used by the Jesuit order you know all it's so conspiratorial I know and that's just awful <laughs> how about this one another one I used to go to Liberty Baptist Church right there it is 
that was it. They were actually considering making me pastor at this place. I used to go there faithfully attending in there, you know. This is the Babel building right here. This was a Hiles uh, spin-off church. He actually preached there. Jack Hiles preached there. And uh, this is the gymnasium right here. And then out here is the equipment building. Right here is the water tower right there. This is all the church's property. And right there is your antenna. I think it was probably actually the water tower. They just have it, you know, like that. But, yeah, right there. I used to go there all the time. This whole big property here is the church property. They go down into this tree line here and come up around. They were always looking for ways to make money and everything. But then I did an interesting one. I thought this would be interesting. Uh, Tempe, Arizona. This is where Anders Snake's Babel building is, right in the middle there. And it's a rented building. It's not. He doesn't have a Babel building. But I just thought, man, you talk about <laughs> control. Look at the tower results. You know, I mean, insane. Uh, 551 towers within four miles of Anders Snake's cult building. Look at, I mean, look at that. That is incredible. 551 towers. Okay. What about antennas? 680 antennas found within four miles. <laughs> I mean, good night. Look at that. Isn't that insane? Right outside of Phoenix there, you know? I mean, just crazy. You talk about a uh, center for mind control. I mean, just just totally poisoned with it. You know, just absolutely insane. Uh, I just, I cannot understand how people can defend this stuff. I mean, <laughs> right there. Baptist churches using getting, you know, I don't know if they're getting 1500 a month for each of them. I have no idea what they get. But, you know, the article there in the New York Times said back in 2001, they're getting $1,500 a month. The one that they talked about, 1500 a month. So that's 3000 apparently, for these, these people. Why is this so important? Well, I believe that this is going to be communication. You know, the Bible talks about the whole world worshiping the image of the beast and how he's you know, the false prophet is causing fire to come down from heaven and all kinds of other signs and wonders in the heavens. These things have a part in that, I believe. And they're using Babel buildings. They're using church steeples. Right there you go. Church steeples being used to house these antennas for communication. And I believe that they can, that they're listening in and recording you everything that you say when you go into one of these Babel buildings. And as you saw, from the video, just the one right down the street from us. Here's another picture of one. Do you see any outward antennas there? You know? First Lutheran Steeple Concealment, Redlands, California. Antenna concealment in churches is what the thing's called. You don't see any kind of antenna on there. See, it's just so innocent. Oh, it's just so nice. Oh, what a beautiful old church building that's being used as a cell phone tower with microwave radiation coming off of it and you go and you sit in underneath that thing. Brethren, if there, there's just no excuse anymore. People get mad at me, you know, and they say, well, you shouldn't be, you know, uh, saying things about people, you know, that you're lost if you go to a church building. I said, if you continue in these things after hearing the truth, then you're lost. I mean, good night, people. Come out of this stuff. You know, it's just, it's disgusting to see these just these are pagan buildings there's no new testament for them and to see people defending it it just tells me there's serious problems with these people that defend this paganism man get out of these church buildings okay one more thing i want to say very quickly and that is we've had experience with this before um this antenna search.com uh, a lot of times after we make a video and bring videos out, even when we're using Camtasia, I mean, I'm recording the screen. I can't fake any of this stuff. It's just I'm recording what I'm showing you online. Uh, even after a lot of times when we do this, they'll change the websites or take the websites down to try and discredit the video that we're making. So um, I don't know if this video or if this channel is even going to be up or this, excuse me, not channel, website is even going to be up in the future. But I just need to make that little comment there um, that it's a very good chance that they'll take this website down. I've seen that happen many, many times. So, um, 
It's just getting crazy, brethren. Get out of these buildings.